Yep, yep. Smells like it's time for another C++ programming video. Hey everybody, I'm Marty and welcome back to the SFML 2D platformer game series. This is part 34 in the series. So last video, here's the code where we had it last time. So we have our player moving, we have gravity acting upon him so that he falls similar to how you would in real life. So that's good and all, it's working fine, but we can see we've got a few more functionalities to add to our game to make it look like as if it's a game. I mean, right now our player looks like he's got a severe case of rigor mortis setting in. So to fix our player's dead-like appearance and make, get him a little more lifelike, we're going to add animations to our character in this video. Before we start programming, have you done your programmer stretches this morning? Before you start programming, you want to stretch out your fingers, loosen your ligaments, and you don't want to get any bloated discs now, do you? Now, the first thing we need to fix is the way we load textures. Right now, what we're doing is we're creating a texture for every single entity. So essentially, we're creating a texture that is 10 times larger than this one, and that will eat up your VRAM. So to fix this, we actually load the texture once, and then we just use a reference to that texture throughout all of our entities. So go into main.cpp, scroll down. Right after we declare our Boolean WSD controls here, go SF colon colon and then we'll go texture. First texture will be our player text. So we'll just call it player text, player texture. Create another and this will be SF colon colon texture and this will be the platforms texture. Notice how I said platforms, that's because we're gonna store all of our possible different platforms onto one sprite sheet and then cut it out from there. All right, now let's actually load those textures. So go player text dot load from file. This is a method to load from a file. The file shall be open quotes resources. We can actually just scroll down and hit our favorite keys, the best keys, control C. And what would control C be without control V? All right, we're going to do the same thing for platforms texture. So dot load from file and the file again shall be scroll down. We can just copy and paste that control C because copy and pasting is just the best control V. All right, so end that line with the semicolon. So then how would we use these textures now? Well, the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna just give it the texture in our constructors. So take out this line where we set our texture of our level, take that out and take out this in it as well. We're gonna restructure our entity class a little bit. So we're gonna just take out that in it and then at the very end add platforms text. I almost took a sip out of my USBs. I meant to take my water cup. Now, while we're here, you're probably thinking, how can we call the constructor of our levels that we've already created here? Don't you call constructors here, right where we instantiate the objects? And you're right, this code here won't work because we're trying to use a constructor when we've already said, hey, we're not using a constructor right here. So to fix that, we are going to use something called a dynamic array. It's essentially just like this plain old array we've been using so far, except you can resize it and you don't have to know how big it is in order to use it. So scroll up, in order to use it, we're gonna go hashtag include and include a new library. This will be called vector and Vector is probably the worst named library ever. Boggles my brain because it is not a mathematical vector. So why would they would name it Vector? Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't create C++, I don't really know. Control save, scroll down and back to where we can create our array of levels, or array of platforms. Go Vector and then, make sure you spell it right, that does help. Vector, open up a angular bracket and then close that set of angular brackets with platform trapped in between. And now we can take out this 10 here because we don't have to tell it how big it has to be. Oh, and of course you gotta go STD, colon, colon, vector. So now what we do in our for loop here is we actually create a new platform. So we'll go platform and then P, and then we go uh, level dot push underscore back. P. So what we do is we create a container that can hold all of our platforms and it's called level. And then as we interpret this array, that is our level set, we create a platform right here. So we actually create a platform object right here. And then we push that back. So we store in our container of level and then we delete it because in C++, anytime you exit a scope, which is anything in between two squirrely braces, everything inside there gets deleted. So if you had an integer right in here, int a equals zero, you would not be able to use this integer a throughout the rest of this program. You would only be able to access it inside this scope. So now if you're thinking, how can we use a platform that we've already deleted? The answer to that is because we actually copied this platform 
into level dot pushback. All right, scroll down and let's do likewise for player, except we're not gonna throw player in a array. So just go in part of the constructor, just go player and then text. Scroll down, we also gotta fix our drawing method a quick second here. So right where we draw our level, just replace all of this inside the parentheses and just replace that with go plat form and then add an ampersand and then p colon and then plat forms and then we go window dot draw p it's essentially just a for loop that is going to cycle through every single element within our array of level so why are we calling it platforms i don't know let's call it, let's go with it, what it actually is which is level so the reason we throw in an ampersand here is because we don't want to create a new platform right here. We just want to reference the existing platforms. All right, looking good. Did I say looking good or looking good? So that's about everything we're going to need to do in our main function. Now we shall open up entity.hpp. So go into our include library and open up entity.hpp. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to remove this set texture method. So just delete it. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to delete our entity.cpp source file. So just right click it and then go delete. So entity.hpp for now will just be a header only class. So then if you wonder where we're going to get our cool methods such as our drawing function from or method, where we're going to get that from, we shall get that from a public sf colon sprite. So the way that we're going to achieve animation in SFML is we shall store all the possible frames of animation for our player onto a single image. This is what we call a sprite sheet. And then we're going to take some good old scissors and just hack out all the possible different frames of animation using something called a SF interact. So an SFML interact is just a grouping four different coordinates together, which will be the X and Y coordinates of each frame in the sprite sheet and also the width and height of each frame in the sprite sheet. Now to apply these different possible frames, we will use another SFML method and this will be called set texture rect, which of course will take our SFML interact as a parameter. Set texture rec just sets the viewable portion of our texture to a certain amount. So then this way, if we were viewing this frame of animation, it would set the viewable portion of the entire texture only to be this frame. However, we right now do not have this set texture rec method. That is because this set texture rec method is part of the SFML sprite class. Now we switch to using vertex arrays and essentially creating our own sprite class. So now you would really have a choice of development for your game. You can carry on using our vertex arrays and our own, basically our own sprite class. And I just lost internet connection. Oh, oh no, we're not back. Well, that's what happens when you live in the country. So we essentially have two ways of creating sprites. In our case, we're just gonna go with the SFML sprite class, and that's because we don't really have any use for a vertex array. Although it's good to know how you would use it. The only reason we would want to go with our own vertex array is say we had a entity that didn't have a fixed shape. So it's like a blob, blob of goo or something, and you wanted to be able to manipulate the vertices of the texture, then it would be a great idea to use our vertex array for that. So we're inheriting pretty much the same thing. We got the same thing as we did before, except now it's just taking care of for us in Sprite. Also, I don't know why, why, what would drive me to tab it like this? I don't know. That is a much nicer tab. I guess programming styles change over, over time. Now we no longer need our vertex array, so you can take that out. And we also don't need our texture. We do, however, need our velocity and also we do need our size, which will be width and height. We don't, however, need X or Y because that's taking care of force in SF Sprite. So let's just replace this with a SF Vector 2F, and this will be size. So this size just replaced our width and height variables. Alrighty, so control save that, looking good. All right, open up player.hpp and open up player.cpp. We're gonna fix our player a minute. So in player.hpp, first thing we need to fix is we now need to add a SF concon texture to our constructor and make sure it is a reference and we can call it T is fine. So the reason we're going with reference is we want to avoid copying the entire texture. If we copied the entire texture, we would run out of VRAM infinitively fast. So that's why we use the ampersand here. We're saying don't copy it, Let's just use the one we have in main.cpp, which is right here. Cool. So the second thing we need to do in player.hpp is we need to set our plot or level array to be a dynamic array. So go 
std colon colon vector and it shall be platform array so an array of platforms add a ampersand so make sure it's the reference of the platform array and we'll call it level we can copy and paste this Control c and paste it in for collide Control v and then go to the top and of course we need to hashtag include our vector vector looking good go into player.cbp first thing we're going to do is again include that vector hashtag include vector and then go into the player's constructor and do the same thing we had last time we did in the declaration file which is our header file so go sf colon colon texture make sure it's a reference and t scroll down and take out this x equals x and this y equals y stuff we don't need that anymore and take out this w equals w stuff too we can just replace that with size.x equals our width and size.y equals our height the things that we don't need here is we no longer need to set up this vertice stuff because that is actually done i mean pretty much the exact same thing is done in the sfml sprite class so we don't need it anymore so backspace it what we do need however now is we need to go set position and this will just initialize our players to position to be whatever our x and y values are here go set position and x and y so far so good so again the parameter for our update method will be a dynamic array instead of just a standard c plus plus array std colon, colon vector and open up some angular brackets platform make sure it's a reference and that will be level scroll down and the next thing we shall do is instead of going x plus equals velocity dot x and the set position stuff we no longer need to do that and we can just replace that with move velocity dot x times speed and then zero so we'll just move the x our x velocity first and then we'll move for our y velocity second scroll down and pretty much the same thing for y so just go move and then zero there goes the internet gremlins probably santa flying around messing up things and then go velocity dot y now we're not going to go times speed the reason we're not doing that is because we noticed before that we're falling rather rapidly that and we're jumping rather rapidly and that's because we were multiplying our gravity by speed. We don't need to do that because all of our Y velocity is taken care of for us by gravity and by our jump height. So good, good. Now go into player collide. And again, we have to replace this platform level. So we'll just go STD, colon, colon, plat, or not platform, we have to go vector and then we go platform so just hold on their platform take it easy and make sure it's a memory address and then level and now in collide to cycle through every single element of the level all right just replace this logic here with platform platform and then ampersand p colon level and then in our logic that checks if we're colliding first thing we need to do is replace this x with our get position dot x and then replace this level i with just p and we replace this x plus y with our get position and then dot x plus size dot x and replace this level i with just p same thing here we just go get position and then dot y and then replace this here with p and replace this with get position dot y y as well plus size dot y so carrying on scroll down the next thing we need to do is instead of setting x here we can just replace the same line of code with set position and then we shall set our x position to be the levels hitbox dot left so that would be p dot hitbox dot left minus our width which would be size dot x so then we can copy and paste this Control c paste it in here as a parameter comma and then to make sure we don't mess up our y position then we want to go get position dot y so that we only change our x position and now we can take out this placeholder line of code scroll down same thing to happen if we collide with the right side of the box then we'd go set position and then we replace this level with p and then we can just copy and paste this Control c paste it in Control v and then we go get position dot y and take out the placeholder line of code we want to do the same thing for y set position and then we'll just go get position dot x to make sure we don't mess with the x position when we're just trying to change the y position and then we'd want to replace this level i with just p dot hitbox dot top and this h with size dot x dot y not x then we can copy and paste this Control c 
and control V and take out the placeholder line once again scroll down and the last thing the last one set position get position and then dot X and then we just want to replace this level I with just P so control C and control V and then take that up all right so that solved our collision detection we got that updating oh one thing I forgot to do is scroll up and go into players constructor and right here we have to set our texture let's do it where we call the set position method so let's go set texture and that shall be T all right good as gold that should work I hope I always say should work I don't say will work, I say should, because it might not, you never know. All right, so open up platform.hpp and platform.cpp as well. In platform.hpp, the only thing we need to change is just modify our constructor, well, modify our, our init method to be a constructor once again. So go to platform and add a new parameter, which will be sf colon colon texture percent t. Control save that, go into platform.cpp. All right, and replace this void platform init with just a platform colon colon platform. Form. and add a new parameter like we did before so sf texture a memory address t so we no longer need this x equals x stuff so take that out and we no longer need this y equals y which can be replaced with size.x equals width and size.y size all no size.y equals h and then where we set up our hitbox here we want to go x plus zero and then x plus size dot x and then we replace this y with a capital to make sure it's the parameter values and we go y plus size dot y all right and then what we don't need here is we do not need this vertice stuff so delete it and we want to add our set texture method a call to it so go set texture and then t and in set position we can replace this with x and y Okay, and that should take care of it. Control save, hit F7, and see what happens. Bugs? What? Okay, go back to player.cbp and collide. Whoa, whoa, that's a lot of bugs. All right, very first one, and it's in main.cbp. It's best to start top down. Uh, typo, and that would be SF texture. You guys probably catch these typos, but I don't. All right, and scroll down, we got one more error and that's with our mouse functions this player.x is no more so go player.getposition.x which is actually the more appropriate way of getting the player's x position and instead of player.w we're going to go player.size.x and then do the same thing for player.y player.get position and then dot y dot two way and player dot size dot y one more and that's where we set our view or set our views center again player dot x is no more so just go oh we could uh copy and paste this because this is our player center control c look at that we're we're cheating the system did we just hack this system i dare say we did while i was highlighting this that was about to copy i noticed it quick little bug and that's what we, we gotta go y so there now we copy this control c and replace this little tidbit this player dot y plus player dot h and replace that with get position so for sublime me it kind of wraps things over this might look a little weird this here is one line so don't worry about it wrapping it just does that hit f7 and we got some more problems all right while we're here we've got an unused variable warning that's telling us so might as well take out this size of level integer remove it control save go into player.cbp to take care of our other issues so right here um we have a little problem and that's because we're going velocity we need to go velocity dot x and time speed and then we go velocity dot y it looks like the rest is just missing semicolons my favorite kind of error so add a semicolon here Control save right after move here, another semicolon there, and line dot sixty six. Scroll down, where is that? Right here. We missed a semicolon here and here. Did we miss them down there? Yes, we did. More semicolons to go around. Three semicolons for all. Control save and now run it. And now and now we got a segmentation fault a seg fault as i call them occurs when you write into memory or attempt to write into memory you do not have access to or you exceed your memory limit so why are we right trying to write into memory we don't have i just love these errors because it doesn't tell you on what line it occurs it just says you got a segment fault oh, beautiful typically the way i track these suckers down is i go into main.cbp and then I post a whole bunch of printing statements because after all, if you hit this half bit of code, 
Well, it means the code hasn't broken so far yet, has it? The source of this nasty little issue is actually we forgot to go into our project directory and delete that object file. So with Sublime Text, make sure you delete the .o files if you deleted the .cpp files. So delete that entity .o and we should be golden. Let's try it one more time. See what happens. Hopefully it works. It does. No way. I was not expecting it to work that easy and beautifully. Wow. <laughs> All right, go into player.cbp. One thing we want to do is just edit our jump height to be a little higher. So let's go with four. Control save, hit of seven. And now we've got a 2D platformer that's behaving more like a 2D platformer. We're now set up to actually start animating with SFML in our game. However, I'm going to end this episode here. And that's because this video is 20 minutes long already. And my internet can't really handle bigger uploads. I mean, it can barely handle smaller uploads. Right now, it's kind of flickering like a Geiger counter. It keeps going. And it's not just slow internet, it's internet that will be there one second and then it's completely gone. And that's a real pain to deal with when you're uploading. I'm going to try and upload the next part in this series fairly quickly here so that you guys can get animating. So stay tuned for that. It should be out soon, depending on how this internet is holding up. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, just leave it down below. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Code like. And I will see you next video.